Hello, what is going on guys? I am the Nexus bringing you guys this week's My Hero Academia. This episode was really good, I'm not gonna lie. It showed just how strong Deku really is, how he can get through most of what he can get through, and the thing that Mongreeds have kind of been waiting for, so for anime viewers only, this is new to you guys, kind of in a way, is the whole one for all concept, which we're gonna be talking about quite thoroughly in this review. If you guys are enjoying before we actually uh, listen to the review here, be sure to give the video a thumbs up, subscribe for more content, I'd love to hear feedback in the comments section down below. But we get to see a huge insight here on Deku versus Shinzo here. And like I said, Shinzo's kind of running up this entire real arc here. He's been on the sidelines, been real quiet, and you can see through his flashback, he has this quirk, which is basically brainwashing, that allows them to take control of anybody through their mind, which can then control the entire body. Just that they respond to a question that he asks, which is kind of broken, right? Kind of OP, dude. You literally are like, hey, what's up? Not much. Boom. You're brainwashed. <laughs> hey, dog. It's like, hey, bro. You dying there of, of bleeding? He's like, uh uh. Nah. <laughs> I don't know. I was trying to think of something there. Essentially, his quirk is kind of OP. I'm not going to lie. That's, that's legitimately broken. You can literally brainwash anybody, no matter how strong your mind is. And he can, you know, provide them to do tasks and such like that. I think the only way that he can get out of it is if he goes, if his body goes through some type of damage. And that will give him a shock. And you know how, you know, damaging shocks go straight to the brain and the nervous system. Which can then wake him back up. So, I mean, logically and theoretically it makes sense. So I'm kind of glad they put that, you know, nice little, nice little twist into there. But the one key factor in that is that the one for all concept came through in this arc. And for really just this episode, if you guys don't know... Uh, all my this is the first one that have one for all basically the whole quirk that he has the whole quirk is called one for all Basically if you go flashback he isn't it's like he's almost the second to last one if anything to have it Since there was like seven or eight people there Deku claimed uh, If you think about it they're including all might if you think about it their Deku is the most recent all one for all and If you guys didn't know as the generation keeps going the quirk gets stronger as it keeps getting passed down It gets stronger when Deku spoke about it to All Might, he didn't quite remember it, but he did vaguely remember it as a child. Whereas Deku here is vividly remembering it. So as the quirk goes on, like whoever Deku would give it to then, they could potentially be stronger than Deku. They have its potential and the strength. They can become stronger than the originator that had it previously before them. So, you know, say they can go for All Might's case and his whole, you know, thing that All Might's trying to do for Deku is to make Deku stronger than All Might ever can be or ever will be or is right now. All Might is not as strong as he was at his prime, but he has gone beyond his limits when he saw versus Nomu. But what basically what All Might's trying to do is he gave Deku this quirk. And he's trying to make Deku a lot stronger than him and all the predecessors to make him the strongest one for all user. So that that was explained in episode one. It was explained kind of vaguely in this episode, mainly at episode one of season two when you talk about it, when they were sitting in the office, he was talking to him about you have been passed down through all the generations of one for all, and you'll see the strongest one, you know, it'll be on your side, yada, yada, yada. So it's really going to come towards his aid here. Um, but enough about that, because that fight did kind of seem like it went on. I'm sure everybody watching, if you really, really, only really watch anime, I can't speak today, if you only really watch anime, I'm sure you thought there's going to be a long, drawn-out fight, when no, that wasn't really the case at all. It just ended up happening, I guess. It was just a fight. It was just a fight. Deku clearly had this. When it comes to combat, he has it. When it comes to, I guess, strategic, Deku still has it. This guy literally just has one quirk that just laughs at everything. <laughs> so, that was, that was nice. I like. I feel. I felt bad for Shinzo because he didn't have any negative intentions. He just wanted to be respected. He wanted to be seen as a hero and not as a villain. People wouldn't trust him. People would be a little edgy around him. They'd be a little wary. And can you blame them? Can you really blame them? The dude can brainwash anybody. If you piss him off one day as one of his friends, he'll brainwash you. If he thinks he can't pass a test, he'll brainwash you, get all the answers off you. Boom. Like, I... You can't blame them, Shinzo, bro. You really can't. But at the same time, it's hard to go through that. People not really being his friend. Um, 
Well, they'd be his friend, but they'd be real scared about him because, you know, they would always say, oh, your crew would be great for a villain. Or he'd be terrifying as a villain. So everybody kind of like uncoincidentally saw him as a villain, you know? So, Jesus Christ, that's a huge feels bad moment. I did feel bad for him, I'm not gonna lie. But at the same time, he kind of needed to, kind of needed to take the L here, bro. Because Deku's got you be here, man. But we did see the Todoroki's fight immediately afterwards after this. We did see, before the fight though, we saw him and his dad having a little conversation. He's getting stupid mad, dude. He is getting stupid, stupid mad. He does not want to use his left side. His left side is literally only for heat, which is passed down through his dad. When the right side is just ice, passed down through his mother. And we can also see here in the anime that he has siblings. He also has, you know, brothers and sisters, etc. And you'll find out as the series goes on. And it just really seemed like he does not like his dad, which is obvious. But it's even being more emphasized that he doesn't like his father here. Because he just wants to go through what his mother was passed down to him. Even though his mother isn't fond of him. If you don't remember from last week's episode, when I did the review on it, go check that out. Literally, his mother poured, 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 I'm like half asleep, I can't talk. She poured boiling water on half of his face, and that's why he has that mark. So, because she didn't want to have a father with his dad, Endeavor, which is kind of a scumbag, I'm not going to lie. He's, he's kind of a scumbag. For the second strongest hero, you'd think he wouldn't really be a scumbag. But no, he's kind of a scumbag just just a little bit you know but we do see here though uh Todoroki's fight is a landslide of hell dude absolutely obliterated him dude he obliterated this tape dude I'm like bruh you really think you throw in hands and this tape dude is all motivated it's like oh sorry Todoroki I don't care who you are man I gotta beat anyone to move on I'm like nigga really Bro, he got his ass destroyed, dude. It was so inside. He's like, sorry, I'm mad. He just, yo, he nutted all over him, dude. So much semen all over him, dude. All the ice, it took up the entire stadium. Everything. Jesus Christ, Todoroki. Jesus Christ, man. He ate his ass. He beat him up like no tomorrow. But going back to Shinzo, I really did like how the audience was like, hey, don't mind, man. Don't fucking mind, man. You know? Or no, to the tape dude, but more along for Shinzo, I really did like all the pro heroes said that he has all of this promise. And he actually could be a pro hero just like them with the ability that he has. So it's, it's incredibly rare and it's incredibly useful. So, <laughs> little fun fact there. We're not going to be getting though Todoroki vs Deku for a while though since they were like the first two fights here. Uh, it's it, it's going to be like they have to go through all the other fights now guys, like this preliminary. So... We're going to be seeing Ida versus Ochako tomorrow, etc. Baku will be fighting. Uh, going to be seeing a lot of fights at the tournament here. I'm pretty excited. And I'm really excited because if you guys don't know, um, the arc after this, which I think they'll be showing, the training field arc with Stain. I think they might be showing that. I'm pretty excited. They're one of the best arcs in the series. Guys, thank you for watching. I am Numb Nexus. Slap a like, subscribe, and I'll catch you guys next time.